afternoon. I want to welcome each and every one here today. I want to especially thank you for the effort that you make coming here today. You know that time is of the essence at harvest time. We certainly did not want to be here today for this purpose. We appreciate and thank each and every one for what you've done and for your support. My daddy, Dave Cook, we are extremely grateful. And thankful to the Lord for our dad. to spend here on earth with that, although it was much too short for us. We believe, though, according to the Bible, there is much more life to be lived on the other side. We're so glad to have that promise of spending eternity with us. We as a family believe in the salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. We also believe the decision to serve the Lord is a choice that every individual needs to make. It's an individual choice. We're so thankful for the choice that Dad and Mom and each of their children have made in their lives. We would encourage each one present to make sure that they make the right decision in their lives. Amen. Life on earth here to us is truly just a short dash as the little poem that was inserted in the program. If you didn't read it, read it because we really believe that. We wonder how that each one of us have spent our dash. Dad loved everyone. He always wanted to make absolutely sure everyone was always taken care of. He tried always to include everyone that he could in anything that he could. We sure want to do the same today for each one of these. On behalf of our family, once again, we would like to extend a sincere welcome to each one of you and a special thank you for coming to honor our precious dad. We truly believe that he was a very special man. I would now like to ask Uncle Don Thorson, Mom's only brother, Dad's business partner most of their lives, a special friend to Dad, a real Christian example for us. If he would come and open in prayer at this time, we really appreciate it. Yes. If I could just 
to be a part of your life, if I could help carry your load, if I could encourage you, if I could, if I could help you in life's journey in any way, and so that we can pass and we kept doing things that I thought a big brother just would have done for me. And by the end of the weekend, he was raising real high. <laughs> and anybody who couldn't love him had a problem. So, uh, but I didn't want to tell Donna that. I, and she, yeah, she said, she, yeah, she came and asked me. She said, what do you think? I said, I wanted her to make a decision on her own, you know. I didn't know if I thought it was pretty important. And uh, so I just said, well, it's pretty good. But the more I got to know him, the more I loved him. Man. I really loved that man. It, it, 60 minutes with him, 60, 60 years, I couldn't tell you what all he's done for me and my family. Encouragement and uh, help to get the right perspective on things. He can analyze the situation and come up with a just path in just no time at all. We were in business together, and in the early years, we had negative cash flow. I don't know if you know what that is, but the accountants do not like it. <laughs> but that was what was dealt to us, and that's all we had, so you worked with that. You certainly could work with that. We learned early in life. Business needs one head. He was that. And uh, uh, I, I try once in a while to disagree with him, but when we passed the out, it was way better figures than mine. So we went with him, and I felt my job was to carry the shovel and pick up any misdemeanors that were dropped. <laughs> and so we had a wonderful relationship, a wonderful life. We wouldn't trade him for anything. He's my hero also, just a real, really, really precious. So he, uh, he just made such a difference in my life. Thank the Lord for him this day again. And uh, so let's all just pray together and just ask God to be with us this afternoon as we respect and honor his fantasy. Our loving Heavenly Father, we're so, so thankful for the part that you have in each one of our lives to accept you as personal Savior. Uh, we realize as we come to respect and honor Brother Dave, Lord, and the life that you live. It's just, it's just so easy to see your reflection in it. Oh, yeah. yes, I just want to thank you for his life. I want to thank you for his family. I want to thank you how he brought them to your word. I want to thank you, Lord, for all that he did for everyone. His office at work was a counseling session station. His, his, he just continually made a difference in people's lives, Lord. I just thank you that we can gather today, Lord, not for this particular circumstances, but we can gather and exchange memories, wonderful memories of a man who made a difference in our lives. We pray, Father, for your family, that you just be with them every way. You take away the loneliness, replace it with a beautiful memory. Father, this gathering we gather in your name that you might be here and be welcome. I pray that every heart would meditate on you, think on you, and take the opportunity to find you in the word that you've sent to us, the word of God. How we appreciate that family also reflects Christ. So we thank you for this gathering, Lord. Everyone that made an effort to come. We ask your blessings on every one of them here, Lord. Pay them for the effort they put to be here this day. How we love you, Lord. We love you better from the one you love me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Today's youngest daughter, Rebecca Doyle, to come and sing. She has a song that she was speaking to me. She didn't know if it was really a, a 
appropriate funeral song, but I think it's perfect. God wants to hear you sing. Amen. And I thought, what a testament. That's that's his testament. Now, he didn't sing, but he praised the Lord. And that's what the song is all about. And this family, through all of this, they sang, and they're still singing. So I believe this, this is a perfect song that he did.
reminds me of Paul and Silas one time in the deepest, darkest, most horrible conditions in the prison, and they sang. Amen. And I know that it pleased the Lord who came on the scene. Amen. And so it's a testimony to me to see this family the way they, yes, they sorrow, but they rejoice and they know that their dad, their husband, their grandpa, they know that he's with the Lord and his testimony lives on in his family. We'd like to ask you to join us in the song, It Is Well With My Soul. You know, Dave certainly could sing this with absolute assurance. I believe his family can. Each one of us, we need to make sure that we can say this. Not just a song to sing, but the words of it. It is well with my soul.
tell you, my little daughter, the day he went home, she felt like she was concerned, or she was thankful that she was one of the older grandchildren, because the youngest ones hardly got to know Grandpa, and she had got to know Grandpa more, so she was glad that she was one of the older ones. Dave and Donna traveled extensively, making new friends wherever they went, and spreading the gospel too. For many years, they spent several months of the year in Arizona and made lifelong friends and many precious memories. Dave had a special love for people, young and old, and this explains his numerous honorary daughters and the fact that he was known as Uncle Dave to so many. Mm -hmm. He always had people coming to him for advice, help and encouragement. He truly lived for others. And as a child, Paul explained his office was a counseling room, and I, I truly witnessed that in my life. His legacy is his unwavering faith in God, mm -hmm. and in his family, whom he loved immeasurably. Dave was survived by his wife of 52 years, his sweetheart, Donna. She hadn't checked her phone messages. Yesterday, she decided to do that. And there was one message that Dad had on the phone that she hadn't heard, and it was, Hello, dear. Uh, he was at chemo with one of the girls, and he told her that he loved her, and that he was on his way home to see her shortly, and Mom didn't know that was on his way yesterday, and we appreciated that. His five children, Heather, Greg Hare, David, Carmela Cook, Sharon, Florian Hagman, Rhoda, Mike Whitmire, Rebecca, Louis Doyle, and his 16 grandchildren, Juliana, Christian, and Levi Hare, Hope, Luke, and Cale Cook, Daniel, Emily, Matthew, Jeremy and David Hagman, Ivan, Natalia, Christoph Whitmire, Israel, Ezra Doyle, and his special friends Vitaly, Luda, and Greg, second Strangle. He will be missed, loved, and never forgotten by his family. It is hard to imagine how life can go on without his wisdom, strength, and love in our lives. Dave was predeceased by his parents, Herman and Chrissy Cook, his parents-in-law, Chris and Audrey Thorson, his brother and sister-in-law, Don and Marilyn Cook, his sister, Marge Cook, and his Greek wee granddaughter, Gabriella Audrey Duet. We would like to thank our church family for their tremendous support in so many ways throughout Dave's illness. He loved each and every one of you for that. Not truly was special. We would also like to offer special thanks to medical personnel who took such good care of Dave. Dr. Amalette, Tracy from the Saskatoon Cancer Plan, Dr. Pence also from Saskatoon, Dr. Alana Serkin, Dr. Roykin from Prince Albert, Nicole and her staff at Home Care. And he had a little, I don't know how you call it, I call it, I'll call it a niece, Janet Steamer, that sure was helpful and he appreciated it. In lieu of flowers, a memorial has been established for the Weldon Christian Tabernacle Missionary Fund. The tournament was held at 11 a.m. at the Canistano Cemetery in Canistano Sands. This time we'd like to invite Dave's daughters, <laughs> Heather Hare, from Malika, Sharon Hagman, Rhoda Whitmire, and Rebecca Doyle, they come to their tribute.
Good afternoon. Us girls would also like to extend our heartfelt appreciation to each and every one of you who made such an effort to come out and to honour our precious daddy, to pay tribute to a well, life well lived. The outpouring of love and kindness and support that we have been shown is very humbling, and I truly hope that you can know what it means to us. How do we even begin to capture a lifetime of living and loving, especially with the passion and excitement that dad put into everything he did? In just a few short words, simply put, it's not. As I sat down to try and write out our thoughts we had collected, I just started to cry and I told my mom, I can't do him justice, and that's the truth. But we will certainly try to tell you a little bit about the essence of our dad and what made him so wonderful. I'm sure you noticed the thought-provoking poem, The Dash, in your programs. And so we just want to tell you a little bit about our dad's dash. Growing up as a youngster, Dad was known to be fun and adventurous. He was quite the character, always so full of life. Their family was close, and he enjoyed telling the story about his kind, sweet sister, Auntie Lila. When he would get into a little trouble on the school playground with some kids that were picking him up, she would come to his aid and defend him. No one would believe it now, but she would use whatever force necessary to put a stop to it. He made his sister, our Auntie Heather, do chores for days because she said, perhaps. He convinced her that it was a swear word and he was going to tell their parents if she didn't take over his chores. No, life with Dad was never, ever boring. I guarantee it. <laughs> Oh, how Dad loved life. He did everything with his whole heart and soul. Whether he was eating a good steak, Dad said when God made the cow, he was thinking of him. <laughs> or enjoying the grandkids, he simply lived life to the fullest. We'd like to tell you about a few more things he was exceptionally passionate about. The first one was his faith. As a young man, Dave gave his heart to the Lord. Jesus, which changed the course of his entire life. He happily shared his testimony each opportunity he got, which many of you here could attest to, I'm sure. His faith shaped his choices, his decisions, his family, and every aspect of his life. After his retirement, he loved to go on mission trips, spreading the word of God wherever he went. The next passion we're going to tell you about is our mom, his precious sweetheart, Donna. Mm -hmm. I'm sure this is also no secret to many of you. He was happy to let people know that after 52 years, they were still on their honeymoon. He was so very proud of her, and she was completely devoted to him. As you've already heard, Dad was a salesman through and through. Pretty much the only thing that wasn't for sale on our farm was Mom. <laughs> she was truly his best friend. One night, very recently, Mom was going to sleep in the bedroom down the hall while one of us stayed with Dad in their room. It was so painful for him to walk, but then he insisted on taking the walker and walking her down the hallway to the room where she was going to sleep. Always so gallant and still wanting to be her knight in shining armor, which he most certainly was. Another of Dad's greatest passions was his family. He had a his big heart had room to make everyone feel so very special. He had each of us children convinced that we were, in fact, number one. <laughs> he loved each of his siblings so very much, and he loved spending time with them. He was so thrilled that the Dave Cook family was able to host the annual Cook Family Barbecue just this past August. It is a big and boisterous family, and how he loved each and every member of it, as well as the Thorson family, held such a special place in his heart. Dear Uncle Don and Aunt Elsie, even bringing in carrot juice at four in the morning. Yeah. His, as his children grew older and married, Dad grew very impatient for grandchildren and thought the day would never come. However, once they started to arrive, it seemed there was no stopping. 
He was fond of telling Sharon and Florian that the command to multiply and replenish the earth was not their sole responsibility. <laughs> What grandpa would fly his four granddaughters into Saskatoon just to take them out for breakfast at Chorus and then sit there with straws coming out of his nose to entertain them. <laughs> he had such a wonderful sense of humor. Or the time he loaded up the grandsons in the old Cadillac to take them to the rodeo in PA with his chemo still attached. Any nurses here we could get in trouble. <laughs> By the time he got to Rhoda's, he was so loaded with boys that when she came out of the house, I don't think he was real anxious for her to see just how many boys were in that car. Yeah. When they got to lunch, he had them walk into A and W in shifts so that people didn't <laughs> see how many were getting out. <laughs> Needless to say, the boys had a wonderful time. Grandpa was just such good company. Even as us girls took him to his numerous medical appointments these past five years, he turned them into fun outings and supper dates. And that's the truth. It was, it was a joy to take him. He was simply amazing. He also helped many of the grandchildren take their online farms, firearm safety courses as they came of age. He was so proud when they all passed with flying colors. He was a devoted grandpa, attending their school events, their track and field, even though he was fond of saying that he himself was kicked out of grade two for shaving. <laughs> Another part of his family not to be overlooked were his sweet son-in-laws, Greg, Florian, Mike, and Lewis. Dad made the saying, gaining a son, not losing a daughter, a reality, and they truly loved him as their own. And of course, we can't forget our Carbella. Dad always liked to say that she was his favorite daughter-in-law, <laughs> and indeed she was. It seemed that during these last weeks, when we had the privilege of caring for Dad at home, our spouses just stepped up to do whatever was needed at Mom and Dad's or in our homes, each sharing their unique abilities. While we went through this trial as a family, it gave us an even greater appreciation for each other. Flying and farming were two more of his great passions in life. Dad and his beloved Cessna 206, CFILC, went all over together, and he had so many good memories and fun stories that revolved around flying. He loved the land, his farm, Canada, and you, the people that make up our community. Yes, While some of you may think we live in a remote, cold, bug-infested place, to Dad, it was utopia. So consequently, it is to me too. Although we must admit that he did escape to Arizona for a few months in the winter for many years, making a host of other wonderful friends, a few of whom are even present here today. Shortly before his passing, Dad would still try to get out to the field to watch the combining when he could. A couple of weeks ago, he decided he wanted to go out to the field, and as usual, he wanted to include us all, even though we were far too many to fit in his truck. He then insisted that Juliana, the youngest, agilest, and skinniest, had to be his chauffeur, while the rest of us girls, mom, and all the oxygen tanks filed in the back seat. <laughs> mom was all scrunched in by the oxygen tanks, and I was sitting on Heather and Rhoda's knees with my head actually sticking out through the truck's sunroof, <laughs> while Dad and Juliana sat blissfully and comfortably in the roomy front seats. I'm sure we were quite the sight, but it was just so fun to all be in the field together with Dad, doing what he loved. Dad could always make any mundane daily activity so much more entertaining. Life was just funner when Dad was around. And now before we close, each of us daughters would like to share a little memory with you. When I was a teenager, I was from the Wayne Gretzky era. I remember one afternoon, Dad taking Shauna, Rhoda, once Partsman, who was an avid Oiler fan, and I to a Stanley Cup Finals game. Another time, taking a group of us to an Oiler game and telling us we could go get their autographs. True to his word, after the game, we started the trek. He seemed to find all the right hallways. He had to use quite a bit of his salesman skills to talk us through some of the checkpoints. But we finally got to the right place and we waited for the players to come out. We got Wayne's autograph and a bunch of the others. And all of a sudden, he said to me, Sharon, Sharon, quick, go over and get that one. And the other girls will have it. I wasn't sure. Yeah, go quick. So I went and asked the man for his autograph. And the way he looked at me, I think that was the first time he'd been asked. <laughs> <laughs> a maintenance man or whoever. 
turns around and dad's chuckling in the background <laughs> watching us like <laughs> well, that's what he had talked me into doing. He always enjoyed telling that story, so I thought I had to tell her for him. <laughs> When I was engaged and living in Manitoba, we decided to have David's parents over for lunch. And to make a long story short, it was a bitterly cold spring day. They were on their way home from Arizona, and I lived in a very, very remote location. You can imagine our surprise when they showed up late, driving on a four-wheeler with underwear on their heads and socks on their hands. They had hit the ditch, but the eternal optimist that he was loaded the four-wheeler off the back of his truck, got mom to find their warm clothes, and they continued on their way. <laughs> Speaking of traveling, that is just so much fun to travel with. A couple years ago, we had the privilege of being with him and mom in Ottawa, and the salesman that he was, we talked his way into getting us into the House of Commons, and then letting the grandchildren take a turn sitting in Stephen Harper's seat. <laughs> There are just so many funny stories and wonderful memories about my dad. How do you even begin to choose? But I got to thinking about the quality of how supportive he was in whatever we did. When I was 18 or 19, I decided it would be fun to get my pilot's license like my daddy. As usual, he encouraged and helped me. On my flying exam, the examiner gave me, I think, the highest mark he had ever given out, and I was so proud to tell my dad that. Then, when a music store that I was working at closed, he encouraged me to continue the music school and business, and he was such a huge help with it all. And it is in this context that I want to tell you my little story that I thought was cute and so like my dad. I was training a teacher, actually Carrie Leland, some of you probably know her, to teach group classes of four to six year olds. So we needed to give her a practice class to try out her skills on. So guess what? Dad got to be one of her trial students. <laughs> when I think of how intimidating it must have been to have this big guy coming up to the front pretending he was four and going back to sit at his tiny keyboard, I can help but hardly help but feel for Carrie. Her practice lesson that day included finding the groups of black keys on the keyboard, which we call houses and garages, to make it easy to understand for the four-year-olds. Well, shortly after this class, we were having a big piano and keyboard sale at our store, and guess who faithfully came in to help sell musical instruments? Yes, my dad. My dad had many wonderful qualities, but he was not musical. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, here he was doing this amazing job of selling this instrument, and I can hear him knowledgeably explaining how many octaves it has, and I was blown away because he was right. <laughs> sheepish grin and he said, I counted the houses and garages. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of the most wonderful parts of my life though. It feels like my life will never be the same again and truly I know that it won't. But I am hoping that somehow we can live in such a way that will give honor to this great man who I had the privilege of calling my dad. I have to grin when I remember dad's good nature and his love of fun. When I was going to school in Edmonton and dating Mike, Dad, Mom, and Sharon came to visit me and attend a wedding at Brother Harold's church there. Mike was driving a two-seater Fiero sports car at the time, and since Sharon was going to ride with Mike and I after the wedding, we ended up having to switch vehicles. I'm sure there was some raised eyebrows as Mike's car took off out of the church parking lot, tires squealing. <laughs> Those raised eyebrows turned to looks of surprise when they glanced through the window to see it was dear brother Davey behind the wheel <laughs> with his gracious wife seated beside him. <laughs> Both mom and dad love to have good, clean fun. And although mom appears to be a little prim and proper at times, she was actually the perfect match for dad. <laughs> Dad had a way of always letting me know that everything was going to be all right. Ever since I was a little girl, whenever I would come into a room and he could see I was a little ill at ease or worried about something, he would give me a wink. And that was his code for me that everything was going to be all right. And somehow, it always was. Dad, I could sure use that wink right now. Dad always taught us to believe we could do anything we put our minds to. 
and actually we were just dumb enough to believe him for the most part. <laughs> Whether it was handing over the airplane controls to me while flying or making me pull a trailer through the A&W drive-thru, he always made the impossible happen. So with that in mind, this past spring when Dad was feeling sick, I decided I was going to learn to drive the semi with the Super Bs home from the field. This way I could entertain him with the adventure since he wasn't well enough to be out there himself. So once Ed Lewis convinced that this was a great idea, we headed out to the field. He gave me a quick rundown on all the buttons and the gears and we were ready to go. I got it started and into gear and even managed to change gears without stalling. So by this point, I was feeling really proud of myself and I couldn't wait to get home and tell Dad this great feat. Until Gerhardt, who was seating in the far end of the field, came on the radio, which Dad was listening to at home, asking Lewis, what in the world's wrong with that semi? It keeps lurching across the field. <laughs> Needless to say, Dad was entertained, just not quite in the way I had anticipated. I know it seems like we're telling such light, fluffy stories, but we really can't begin to tell all Dad meant to us, or we just couldn't do it, but he was amazing. And I'm so thankful he was my daddy. I loved him dearly. We were all Dad's girls and consider it one of our greatest blessings to count him and our precious mom as our parents. You bet. Our dad always had time for us girls. He could be with an important CEO of a big company, but he would still help us with whatever we needed. I can still hear the, what you need, hon? He had such a love for everyone, and he was a champion for the underdog. He was incredibly positive, no matter what the circumstances. We could go to him thinking we had the world on our shoulders and leave thinking, well, that was no big deal. What was I so worried about? <laughs> we can hardly fathom how we can go on without him here on earth. He was just such a huge part of our lives. He was not only our daddy, but he was also one of our best friends. So we meet daddy, we love him. Well said and was not embellished. Very much the truth. This time we'd like to have the grandchildren come up for their special. Wish you were here.
begin to imagine how proud they are. Is it a grandchild? I'm proud of them. Yes. Just what a privilege to be part of the outer circle of the family to see what God has done in their lives. I also want to just thank each one for coming. Brother Dave was a very special man. He touched many thousands of lives. I believe that is witnessed today by the many people that have come. And there's many people that wanted to be here and were unable to be here, even from overseas. Many of our friends from over there, they were doing all they could to come, but it was just, just too, too short notice or too difficult to make it. But he certainly was uh, a man that God used in, in, I think, very amazing ways throughout his entire life. <coughs> I just think of Philippians 1 where Paul writes, he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. That says it very well for me. Every time I think of Brother Dave, now, he was instrumental in, in some major changes in my life. First time I met a man that you could truly disagree with somebody, with him on something, and leaving there absolutely as much or more in love with him as when you, you started. He's still not seeing things the same way. Occasionally he'd end up seeing it my way, sometimes I'd see it his way, but uh, the love was the thing that stood out to me. I'd never run into that. I came from a family where you where, where you stood your ground until you convinced them. <laughs> He's kind of the same way. And I, I, I marvel, humanly speaking, there's no way that we should have, but there was something because of who he was as a son of God yes, that was different. And it absolutely changed my life for, for, for the good. Thankful for the fellowship that we had together in the gospel. And I know that there's a part of us, it's a, it's a big hole, that in one way won't be filled down here, at least not in the same manner, but, but the Lord knows. And so while we sorrow, we also rejoice. And uh, we don't sorrow as though those that have no hope, as the Bible tells us. We have a hope. We have an assurance. And yet at the same time, we do sorrow. And, and I marvel at that, how that... Jesus, knowing that, that Lazarus was going to come forth from the grave in five minutes, and yet he wept. Because that's the humanity side. Yeah. And we're made that way. So God knows all about it. So I, I'm thankful for that because we do sorrow. I was, I was doing so good, trying to be strong and all for the family to encourage them. And when that flyover went over, I lost it. Then. Yes, sir. It just, I don't know, that just was the, the point for me. All that emotion inside, it just it had to come out. But uh, he was a very special brother, and we will certainly miss him. But, you know, we believe and, and know that God has a purpose for putting us here on earth. And when Brother Dave was first diagnosed with, with cancer five years ago and was given six, maybe 12 months to live, just something in my heart. I remember what Brother Brandon had said. He says that the devil can't take you until God's done with you. Amen. He's got a purpose for you. Yes. And in my heart, I, I, I knew, I believed with all my heart that God was not done with Brother Dave. And we made a number of trips overseas together and to different things. And there was many people that God used Brother Dave to reach. And, and lives that were brought to Christ and lives that were changed and so forth. It was obvious that God was not done with him. And I know that the five years that he had with his family did something that was immeasurable for them. God's grace is so amazing. Even when we don't see the whole picture, we can see just a glimpse of it. We trust Him. We know that, that He's a good God. And His ways are above our ways. And His love is, is beyond our understanding. As I started thinking about that, the whole thing of, of God's purpose, and I want to just speak on that for a few moments here today. Revelations 4 tells us that the Lord has created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So this creation, we're a part of that creation. We were created for God's pleasure. Yeah. That's our purpose. Another scripture that we take solace from is from Romans 8.28. It's, it's a very familiar and a frequently quoted scripture where it says, We know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. And we kind of stop there. That's the part that we, we hold on to. But you read on just a little bit. It says, to them who are the called yeah. according to his purpose. <laughs> See, God has a purpose for us, and he has called us for that purpose. And without a doubt, to me it was very clear to see 
that God had a purpose for Brother Dave that he was called to. But every one of his children is also called for a purpose. Might not be the same thing. You might be called to sing. Dave wasn't. He was called to witness and testify. He was, I mean, in ways that it didn't matter. You could be, you could be someone that was totally against him, and yet he would just, he had a way of just, he, 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 he was bold, and he'd come in there, and he just, he wouldn't offend. He would say what was on his heart, and you'd end up, and everything was just, was good between you. That was a gift he had, and God That's used true. that. Paul wrote that he pressed toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. So there is a calling that we've been called to according to God's purpose. But that pressing toward the prize, now we think of it in the sense of, of the Olympics or some competition and the glory that the athlete receives for, for attaining the prize. That's not the kind of pressing toward the prize that that's in, a Christian does. No, the, the, it's not a selfish competition, but it's like Jesus gave us an example. It's a, a life of sacrifice and servitude <coughs> that comes from a heart that's filled with God's love. I was reminded of Ephesians chapter 4, where Paul says, I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a vocation. What is a vocation? That's what we do with our life. Our, our life is, is His. If we've been born again, if we, are, if we are truly the Lord's, our life is His, and we've been called to a vocation to live for Him. To accomplish his purpose. Right. And so we need to walk worthy. I believe that was Dave's testimony. He walked worthy of the vocation that God called him to. It says, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Now that's not the athletes that we look out there that are striving to attain the prize, but that is how Christ strove. And that's how we walk worthy of the calling that we have. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And that's where you can disagree with someone and you can still have that unity of the Spirit. I love the way Brother Branham put it so simply. In one of his prayers he said, Lord, may we have the unity of the Spirit until the unity of the faith is brought forth. Right. See, so we can so often try to, 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 to attain and strive for that unity of the faith. We do it in a carnal way and it just causes divisions. Yes. But that unity of the Spirit, if we are born of the same Spirit, we are one in that Spirit. Right. Right. And I believe that is absolutely Dave's testimony. It didn't matter who you were, what you believed, and how far. I remember traveling down into the different parts of Africa. And we'd come into groups that taught polygamy. Well, we strongly disagreed with that, he could love those people and try to reach out and try to, they needed help, they needed the truth. And I admired that in him. It was a lesson for me and, and, and one that I, I pray that I can continue to grow in that. In Philippians 2 it says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind that each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. Once again, I believe with all my heart, that was Dave's testimony. He didn't live for himself. He lived for the Lord, he lived for his family, and he lived for everyone he came into contact with. And then it goes on to say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And it goes to say that he made himself, the Lord Jesus made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant. And that is... The vocation which we have been called. That's the call. 1 Corinthians 6 tells us that we are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Our lives are not our own. Our lives are His. If we have, if we have he's, he's paid the price for us. And in Matthew 5, it tells us that ye are the light of the world. It's quite a statement. And it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. And I want to say that, that the life that I saw, Dave was a light that was set on a hill yes. for all men to see. 
And what I saw there made me appreciate the Lord Jesus and appreciate what God had done in his life and in my life and in, in all the lives of his children. But, but Dave was a special example of that to me. And, and I want to give him the credit for, for, for that humble life that he lived. He knew where he stood and he wasn't wishy-washy, but he was also, I believe he had that compassionate spirit of Christ. Brother Ram said that that is our purpose in life, is to lift up before a dying generation of people that Jesus Christ is still the Son of God, the Savior of the world. That was Brother Brown's heart, or Brother Dave's heart. He wanted the people to know that Jesus Christ, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, Amen. today, and forever. Amen. That was his passion. Yes. I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds, perhaps thousands of times I've heard him quote Hebrews 13. Amen. Now, there's many things. We, we get literally, I mean, you've got just a flavor with the family, with the girls, and then with David there, just sharing a little bit of their experiences with their dad. If you've never met Dave, you'd have to love him after hearing those yeah. tributes. And if you knew Dave at all, you were right there and you could just smile with him. You, you could just picture yourself in exactly that moment because it was so well spoken and, and, and the picture was painted so well. Yes, sir. I would love to have a month, but the family has not given me a month to, to talk about it. But I want to just briefly talk about the ABCs of Dave's, Dave's life. You know, no matter what the minister says, it does not change the man's life. His life has been lived, his testimony has been established, right. everybody that knows him what the minister says, you, know, you can go to a funeral and they try to preach everybody into heaven, but you know, people know, if, if they know the person, they know whether that's true or not. <laughs> but with Brother Dave, I have no question, the life that he lived absolutely speaks for itself. Just the grace of God that was, that was there. But Brother Ram says that everything that we do, we're influencing someone else. Brother Dave had a strong influence at camp. We had the, the girls' dorm, and, and Dave and Donna would be the counselors in that dorm. And those girls just just lived for the next camp where they could be back in Dave's dorm. They just they were that some of those honorary daughters that Dave had. He influenced their lives. Many of them, their lives were changed. They became true daughters of the Lord, Christians, serving the Lord, and we appreciate that. But the Bible said we are written epistles read of all men. That is, your life reads so loud to the public and tell your testimony. If it's contrary to your life, it's without any effect. So you can speak one thing, but your life speaks louder. It's what you are inside of you that people read. Not so much what you say, but what you are. Now, I had the privilege of working with Dave for the past 27 years in the field of the Lord. Worked for him for 14 years in the business there at Farm World. But for 27 years, and I've traveled with him for the last 15 years, to various parts of Africa and Eastern Europe and ministering with him in meetings, sometimes with only 25 people, sometimes as many as 10,000 or 12,000 people in the service. And as we tra traveled, Dave many times would share the testimonies that some of the family mentioned. And I remember one, one trip in particular. He had been with three people that Brother Branham spoke of on tape. He'd been with Donovan Words. Sister Barbara's words, dead. And Brother Donovan had had a cancer growing on his ear, getting very, very bad. Brother Ben noticed it, and they talked, and put his hand on it, and that cancer was gone in just a, a matter of days, I believe it was. And Brother Dave had just talked with him and, and heard that firsthand from, from Brother Donovan from Minnesota. Then he was down to Arizona, and he met Brother Doug McHughes, which many of us know who had had a, an incurable disease of the eye and he was going to go blind. And he was, could hardly, couldn't stand the bright light. And, and he'd been out hunting with Brother Branham and Brother Branham had a vision. And saw that he would be healed all was well, not to worry. And that very day, Brother Doug's eyes were healed. And so Brother Dave had a chance to talk directly with Brother Doug, uh, Doug and hear the testimony again from him. And the third person was his father-in-law, Sister Donna's father, Chris Thorson who in 1956, in some meetings that Brother Branham held here in Prince Albert, was healed of severe heart trouble. And he lived, what, about 50 years after that. 
before the Lord took him home. And when he when he died, his his heart was the best part in him. Yeah. God does, when, when God heals a person, he does a good job. Yes, sir. Amen. And I would hear Brother Dave tell these testimonies over and over and over, wherever we went. And after a number of years, I thought, you know, I want to go back and I want to just hear once again or see once again that time when, when Chris Thorson was, was uh, healed here in Prince Albert. And so I looked it up, and here's, here's from that meeting. And Brother Brandon had the gift of discernment. He would look out there and say, I see someone that, that has this and so forth, these... Uh, your name is such as, I mean, this was not this, this broad general stuff. This was very specific, just like Jesus, where he said to, to Nathaniel, he says, I saw you when you were under the tree before Philip called you. That was very specific. See, that's, that's the Spirit of Christ, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. The Bible that we have today, too many people make it of, of no effect. Yeah. They're afraid to take it just the way that God brought it. Yeah. But Brother Branham absolutely had that same gift and ministry that the Bible talks about. And Brother Dave believed that with